president of the college had sent her home. He was afraid she was going to die out of there. But we docked her with her, Sue. She was all right. Well, I don't know how Mama knew I was coming in on that train. She didn't like to talk about her ways. So, just after graduation, I married Carl Burke Tanksley. He was the most handsome man at Reinhardt, and we do look good together. Carl is tall, has dark hair, always keeps his clothes nice and neat. Now, he won't walk around in his work clothes all dirty. Not Carl. The minute he gets home, he cleans himself up. He always cares about the way he looks. Now, we didn't have a lot of money. You know, nobody did in those days. Why, when we got married, we didn't have five dollars between us. But we always kept one nice suit of clothes apiece. Carl's first job after we married was working at the lumber yard. He made 15 cents an hour. And that was hard earned money. My first job was teaching school up at Sugar Creek. We, both Carl and I, had been two years of college and passed our state of Georgia teacher's exam. But they would only let one to a family be a school teacher because, see, the money was so good. Fifteen dollars a week. So that's good money for the Depression. Well, Sugar Creek was a good piece from home, and Carl and I scraped together seventy-five dollars. And he bought me an old 1926 A model with a rumble seat. And I'd drive that old A model up the holler through all the mud holes to the two-room schoolhouse at Sugar Creek. Miss Mamie Kirk, she taught the older children, and I taught the primaries. Some of those children look so raggedy. I always carried a big lunch to school so I could divide it up with those that didn't have any. I couldn't stand to watch a child go hungry. It'd break my heart to be working with a child and him just be getting at his numbers and then have his daddy come and take him from school for a farm hand. But that's how folks did. They were poor and they needed all the help they could get on the farm. So I had about 20 children in my class and some would come and go throughout the year depending on when they were needed at home but one day I got a new little boy in my class so I asked him his name well he told me that his name was Palmsby well I was a little bit taken aback so I said son could you spell that for me I want to make sure that I get it right in my road book well he was only six years old and he couldn't spell it so I said do you have any older brothers or sisters in school that I might speak with? He said, no, he was only one. So I said, well, the next time your mother is over this way, please have her to stop in and see me so I can be sure to get it right. Well, a few days later, this tired little old woman stopped by the schoolhouse and she told me that she was Palmsby's mother. Now, she said she couldn't spell his name because she couldn't read or write but she could show me where it was spelled out. And she had this little book tucked up under her arm, and she set the book up on my desk, you know, resting on its spine, and the book fell open right in the middle of the King James Version. And she moved her finger down the page and stopped at Psalms VI, Psalm 6, 